All right. What's up, y'all? Welcome in. Let me just uh, do some of the techie things. Just come on in and feel free to uh, say hello. Smash some uh, likes and hearts. Let us know that you're out there. Let me know you can hear me okay. Do all the things. Let me just write something really quick here. Here we go. Beautiful. Here we go. All right, guys. Welcome to uh, today's training. What's up, Alistair? Good to have you here. Good to have you at the event, too. Nice to have you, Kathy. What's cooking? I'm 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 manning everything today. Elon is on a trip in Israel, so I'm gonna be manning the chat boxes and trying to do all the techie things. So if I look a little distracted from time to time, just know that I'm looking at the things that you guys are writing and stuff online and all that kind of stuff. What's up, Dottie? Yeah, so come on in, settle in, say hello. And uh today, uh since Elon's not here, I thought I'd take the next few weeks to um just kind of have some special guest stars uh, <laughs> uh, join me for conversations and to just share with you guys like their perspective on uh, being involved in the work here and the kind of changes it's made in their lives. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the headline, it says uh, why information alone won't change your life, and and so what does? And for any of you guys who are probably in the work, you kind of know the punchline to this. But you know the reason um, we talk about that quite a quite a bit, right? Like, um, how many of you guys, as you're coming in here, um, you know, you've been, you've been in the spiritual dojo for a while, like perhaps you've done uh, a course or two, maybe more, um, and you're reading a lot of books or watching a lot of videos online, like how many of you guys uh, fall into that camp, just say I in the chat box. And if you are that kind of person, you know, certainly uh, having a greater understanding of, of yourself of the mind, of psychology, uh, all these things are, are really, 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 really useful. Uh, and they're useful up until a point, okay? And, and it's that, that point where they're useful up to and then what happens beyond that that we kind of want to in investigate here. And I will uh, bring out my guest here in just a moment. I'll keep you on your toes for just a second while people are still uh, piling in here. Uh, our guest, though, has been uh, a client of ours for, you could, I could see her on the, on the off about a year now right about a year yeah oh more more than a year she's telling me she's giving me the one up finger so it sh should have i should have asked prior to uh, for more than a year and you know she's just um honestly I, I i could probably say that about all our clients uh it, it it is moving to work with people it is moving to uh do this work with people and it's for that exact reason it's because what we're sharing with them is not I mean, I guess we could identify everything as a philosophy. It's not a philosophy. It's not how you live your life. It's not here are the five steps you use every time you have a breakdown. And uh, here's how you go have a conversation with people. Like all that stuff is really, really good and really useful. And honestly, we even teach that at our level one work because I, I think it's fundamental and foundational to somebody's uh, liberation of themselves, to somebody's transformation. However, beyond that, right, are these edges... Yeah, it's not a dogma, right? As Alistair was saying, he's been around us long enough now to realize that too. It 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 is a it is a way to view yourself from within and, and from that, from a higher states of awakening, how do you view your inner experience? Okay, like today we were on a coach's training right before I got on here. And I said, you know what what everyone is paying money for what you buy the the material things in your life why you go on vacations why you seek the relationships all that stuff is very beautiful 
And ultimately, I think what we're all looking for and, and can recognize is that we're putting a lot of energy out here. But what's really important to us is our inner experience. You know, whether that's with a loved one and you're getting hurt in that relationship or, you know, again, you go on vacation or you do a course, it's like what you really want to fundamentally shift is this inner experience. And yet so many of us are are externally focused. And so while like uh, mindset work and things of this nature are certainly going to help you learn how to like manage yourself better, cope better with what's happening in your life, maybe even get back into balance quicker, because that's what I always felt when I was doing a lot of mindset work. It was like, well, those things are still happening, but big but I can kind of bring myself back and change the story and like kind of bring myself to an empowered place quicker. And that was really, really vitally important to my growth. Like to learn how to do that was was fundamentally very, very important. How many of you guys can relate to that? Like you know that by by doing mindset work, you're like, you know, I'm a little bit more mindful, I have a little bit more space, I'm a little bit more patient. And then, you know, the question here that I want to kind of uh, talk about with my guest and like talk about her experience, especially since she's doing amazing work and she's newer to the party. And like, I think some contrast is always helpful for us to learn. And I'd love for her to just like share whatever parts of her story um, when she comes out here in a moment about like what was life was like, what is it like now? And then kind of like what's what she believes has sourced these changes in her life in such a dramatic way. Um and I think that's something I want to leave you with as a point of curiosity today. And maybe not even an exact need to answer, like, what what is that? But, like, the question that Elon and I got left with about six, seven years ago, especially if you've done, like, plant medicine work and you've had higher state experiences and stuff like that, it's, like, the real question is, like, can we bring that through into our as-lived experience of life every single day? And what's the work that's required to do that? Because if you're if you're frustrated like we were, that it's like you're still dealing with that same stuff all the time. You keep getting the same relationships. You keep having the same struggles with money. Um, you know, you keep having the same struggles around your health. I don't know why I'm snapping so much, but I'm going to keep doing it. Um, <clears throat> that's the question is like, do we have to always be frustrated? Are we always going to be dealing with that? Or is there some underlay that humanity, our consciousness can actually get to? where we're not just coping and managing, we're actually healing. And to me, that's what healing is. Healing is like, I don't got to deal with that anymore. It's no longer affecting me in my life anymore. You know, that, that stimulus that causes a trigger in my system is no longer, that trigger may be still happening, but the stimulus is not happening. You know, money and health and all those things are not the issue. It's how we feel about it inside that's the issue. Somebody could be happier than a pig in shit with $100 in the bank account, while another person is feeling like they're going to die with that little amount of money in the bank, right? And so it's just these different interwoven relationships. And so that's what I wanted to kind of um, talk about. So yes, for whoever just wrote that, I'll drop you the link here in a moment. Let me bring out my guest. Oh, that was Sierra. Yes, yeah, Sierra, I'll get you the link in just a second, okay? So here's my guest. <laughs> this is Alex. Uh, Alex Franklin. And uh, Alex, you're in Greece right now, right? I am, yes. UK born, but Greece living. Um, and uh, besides being a beautiful human being and gorgeous energy and smile, uh, like I said, Alex is just, uh, as, a, as, a, as an educator, as a teacher, as a coach, I have a, just an immense pride for people who do this work because of the level of courage that it takes. And so here's what I'll say about Alex. It's like most of us have been conditioned and trained that when we feel uncomfortable in our system, there's a, a, a natural kind of, not natural, but a conditioned in looking away. It's as if like your inner awareness doesn't want to deal with that discomfort. And so it like kind of bounces off the discomfort and goes over here and finds something else to do. And that's really easy to do in today's world because we all hold, you know, these incredible stimulus machines in our hands all the time. They can always take us to some other thought or some other thing or some other media. And if it's not that, then we would be doing it anyway in our lives in some other form or fashion. Um, and it takes courage to look at those parts of yourself that are uncomfortable and turn back in to sit and be with them. And Alex has shown uh, resounding courage in that respect in her life and, you know, has, has had incredible miraculous things happen to her because of 
her ability to train herself to do that. And so everybody welcome uh, Alex Franklin to the show today. And um, Alex, just give a little background. I mean, I honestly, it's free range to talk about whatever you feel good about. But like, I kind of just want people to get a sense of like where you were, where you are now. And then like, what is it from this work that you attribute a lot of these like really incredible changes in your life? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you so much. It's like an honor to be here. And I'm always usually watching with you guys and I can see everybody saying hello. So hello, everyone. And it's uh, awesome to be here with you. Um, yeah, so I was thinking when you were asking the question at the beginning, you know, like I've been on the kind of spiritual development, self-development journey probably since around 2008. You know, I've done all the things I was used to teach yoga and I used to until quite recently be a mindset coach. And in all those years, I haven't had the level of growth that I've had in. So it's been about 18 months to answer mm -hmm. the earlier question that I've been mm -hmm. working with you guys. I have not like I, the experience and the growth and the transformation in those 18 months has been more than however many years it was prior to that. So that's you know the thing that I was like really just reflecting on and where I was when I found this work and found you guys um, was really just a place of feeling really stuck um, I felt like I'd been doing all the things reading all the books doing all the courses the trainings like working on myself yet I kept bumping up against the same issues in my life, um, the same like repetitive patterns, the same struggles in relationships, a constant kind of worry and scarcity around money. Um, I was trying to build a business at the time and, you know, having like little bits of success here and there, but really nothing um, consistent or you know to the degree that I wanted or believed was possible and just always not feeling quite capable you know like something was holding me back something was keeping me stuck um, and one of the other things I remember so clearly and I think really was probably the main reason um, that I like stepped into this work was this constant feeling of being on like an emotional roller coaster like I was just experiencing life like I was strapped in the chair yeah. and I couldn't get off. <laughs> so it was just like these highs and lows, these ups and downs from like, you know, anxiety, then kind of depression. And then, you know, sometimes like a really big high, but then a crash. And it was just overwhelming and it was exhausting. And I had no clue. Um why I was having that experience at the time. Um, like you said earlier, I'd been learning a lot of ways to cope with and manage these things that were showing up in my life. You know, I'd been doing meditations. I'd been on silent, I'd like, been to Vipassana, like 10 day silent meditation retreats. I'd, you know, taught yoga and practiced yoga every day and was learning all of these tools about how to reframe my limiting beliefs and everything like that. But it was just coping and giving me more understanding and it wasn't actually getting to the root cause of the issue so yeah there was just this constant frustration of um feeling stuck basically yeah and that's interesting too because you know you sit in a 10 day and like a lot is healing and and so let's kind of frame it this, this way right like there is when you're doing work especially this kind of work here's what kind of what you have to it's going to be weird to say it this way because I'm going to unwind it is to wrap, wrap your head around that. Like there's no sequence, there's no linearity. And if you kind of look at, if you really observe the nature of reality, reality is not sequenced. It's emerging and it's arising. It's like, it's a, it's an unfolding kind of experience. And so our experience internally is also unfolding. Our mind is unfolding. Like how many of you guys have like a thought about like, pancakes and then like the next thought is about like your job and the next thought is about your kids like it's a very sporadic thing like it's not a sequence there's an emergence of an experience now our thoughts generally are coming from triggers in our body like this energetic experience that's internally that we're having internally that most people are not even trained to be aware of we're we're, we're trained to look at big 
sensational experiences. Like I have a headache, ouch, I got to deal with that. But you're not realizing that well before the headache, there was like all sorts of stuff happening energetically in the body in this subtle way, trying to signal you that something is potentially out of balance or off a little bit and that, you know, potentially can come back into balance. Because we've also all had like headaches and then you go do something where you kind of get your mind off of it and it like magically seems to disappear, right? So it's like something something is at a play here underneath the surface of our consciousness. And so even with really, really high-end training, like there's two types of way to train in this non-sequential unfoldment of reality. The first is like you, you're kind of told about it, right? Like here's the, some of these nature of things. But here's the thing. When you talk about the nature of an emergent reality, it's very difficult to start naming it because that student may then think that what you're saying is the truth and then they start looking for that particular version of the truth and it's still a very narrow way of looking at things for example like if you tell it try to explain to somebody what it feels like to fall in love with another human being or experience that love between two people could you give a language you could is that actually giving it an accurate true nature voice and experience of what it's like to be in here being the one experiencing that love or if you like love a musician or a movie, like what it's like to really experience that like connection with that, you could talk about it, but it's not really the same. And so we can either talk about it or we can go play in the territory, okay? Where somebody's just like, here's the environment. Maybe hint at a few little things that may happen in the environment so that the mind could kind of look at it. But ultimately it's like the way that we learn, truly learn and this is probably true for anything you've learned in your life is direct experience. Like you can't learn how to play piano by teaching someone chords on a piece of paper or, you know, talking about what a F sharp is or anything like that. There's some understanding there that's effective and useful, but you're not going to be a proficient, you know, pianist unless you sit down and play. And so like I, I sat in 10 days, I did a lot of uh, plant medicine, shamanic ceremonies with like ayahuasca and mushrooms, I, you know, I don't know, well over a hundred at this point in my life. And the, the lessons were so profound, but I was a lot in the territory in this work for quite some time. And then, and then it helped after I was on the territory for a while to start getting some maps because you need, you kind of need both. But I would say that the territory is way more important at the onset and then as you are kind of like grappling with what's going on, having a teacher come and be like, well, did you notice this? And did you notice that? And did you notice this quality? And did you notice that that change? And then your mind goes like, oh yeah, I did notice that. And it could be so subtle, but like that subtleness is enough to really, <laughs> fire alarm's going off in my house. Hopefully the kids haven't burned down the house. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of adults here that'll take care of it. Anyway, so that's the kind of stuff I wanted to point out because I actually didn't know that you had sat in a 10 day. Yeah, three of them, actually. Three wow. Times. Yeah. Wow. Like, I'm not saying I didn't have amazing, incredible ex sure. experiences, but then life just kind of went back to normal, you know? Yeah. Right, because for a lack of a map. Because at, at that point in time, it's like, hey, I'm having these experiences, but it's like, I don't know, how do I bring myself back into these higher states? Because for me, when I sat in a 10-day, like now with today's language, I had a really good training and subtle awareness in my body. But what I was still looking from, I was still looking from this part of mind. There was some separation, but I, I wasn't yet going into the higher states. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't recognize non-local awareness. I didn't recognize unconditioned mind. I didn't recognize the qualities. And here and there, I remember touching them. Like now it's like, oh yeah, I remember touching that. I remember becoming aware of connectivity between everybody and stuff like that. But again, like, without some teacher being like have you noticed and again no different than a way a child learns when they're you know kind of experiencing the world touching the things like the parent is going to say like this feels smooth that feels rough you know and the child goes oh that's what smooth is that's what rough is and so this this helps uh kind of like navigate our consciousness and that's the kind of like the the premises for everybody is like we're not here to tell you what how to see life what we're attempting to do, I think we do rather well, is give you maps to understand how to navigate your own awareness. What then the awareness can become aware of, that I think has more to do with your soul's purpose, with our evolution as a planet and as a species and stuff like that. And, and that 
we leave that up to, to energies and spirits and universes and gods and whatever you want to call it because ultimately no teacher really knows the exact thing that any particular student needs more than their own awareness so we want to we want to cultivate your own awareness to such a high degree where you trust it so much that you literally use it as your own vehicle for liberation, for healing, for transformation, for alignment, for finding your way in this world, for connecting with partners, for how the food that you eat, for the, the way, when you decide to sleep. It's like it just becomes the compass, like your own inner compass in such a way that it empowers people to such a high degree that they really go do stuff. They start doing stuff in their life that they would have never done before. So can you give people like a little, um, whether in your personal life or professional life, like you know, just, just some examples like before and after? Yeah. 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 I mean, before I was working for someone else, um, probably working more hours than I needed to. Um, yeah. Yeah there was like stress, overwhelm, all that kind of stuff, like I said before. Um, the things that have really shifted for me have been just really establishing, I think, you, you know, you just kind of touched on it, this, um, this trust within myself, like this inner guidance, knowing higher self, whatever you want to call it, that I now feel I can connect to and like what this is what has enabled so many things in my life to change recently because I started to really follow that and previously I was you know looking back I was such a people pleaser it was like had a lack of boundaries I was constantly giving more to other people my energy my time whatever to people that I didn't really need to and exhausted myself in the process and tapping into and really connecting with this um, like inner alignment is like it's enabled me to start saying no to things that I would never have dreamed of saying no to in the past, which has enabled me to say yes to things that like really light me up that I'm really excited about. And it just in the last few months, um, you know, my life has completely shifted. Like I now know, I now completely work for myself. Um, I've got a coaching business where I've just launched a group coaching program, which has been like kind of something I've wanted to do for probably the last like three years or so, you know, at, at least like initial stages of that were there, a, a, you know, three, four years ago. Um, but I was never able to really step into it and it's like in the last couple of months, all these things have just kind of happened really naturally, really effortlessly, really easily in a way that it's like, it's crazy to look at because it's been, I've been working less than I've ever worked in my whole life. I've earned more money than I earned in the whole of the last year in a period of about two weeks. Um, my business is just like kind of rocketed to a place where I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is just the beginning. And I can now see like, wow, there's so much more I get to do here. Um, and then, you know, that's kind of like the business and the money side. So that's all started to flow and that's been amazing. But then also, you know, like I, I kind of quit my job and I had a holiday booked directly almost directly after it. it was just coincidence actually like I'd booked the holiday months ago I had no clue I was going to quit my job and I had no clue that the holiday would land just around the time that I finished like finished my work and in like when I think back to who I was before and how I would have been in that scenario before I would have been like under extreme amounts of anxiety and overwhelm and stress about like money and what am I going to do and how am I going to find a job? And, and it would have been, I would have just gone into panic, right? I would have gone into like, I need to fix this and figure this out. Yeah. And, and I didn't do that. And instead, any time that fear or anxiety arose, because it, it did a couple of times, you know, like I'm, I'm still human. <laughs> And it, it did arise a, a few times, but the amount was so much less than ever before. And instead, I just sat with that fear and anxiety and it, it dissipated and I 
stayed you know on path and I decided I'm not going to go into panic I'm going to go on this holiday and enjoy my holiday because otherwise I'm just going to be like looking for a job I'm really stressed I'm not going to enjoy my holiday right so I went off on this like 10 day vacation to Greece as it turned out and then while I was here I decided I don't really want to go back to England where it's like cold and rainy and so I might just stay here in Greece and now I work for myself I get to choose to do that um so I decided to stay and I basically almost a whole month passed of me like not really working not really doing anything just kind of having a vacation and then in a couple of days um at the towards the end of that month I just had like two people reach out to me and I signed two one-on-one clients and you know made more than enough for like the next month's salary and was like oh that was easy and then yeah all of the group program and everything flowed after that um so yeah I'm also like living in Greece now like literally no plan I've just been booking Airbnbs been to a few different ones so far booking them for however long feels good and then when it doesn't feel good anymore I go somewhere else to a different part of the island and um yeah it just feels so nice to be able to just like flow with life in that way and and it's I I honestly have had so many moments in the last few months where I don't even recognize who I am like the thoughts that pop into my head like my my mindset has hugely changed like especially in terms of like what I feel able to receive like in terms of money and things like that and opportunities and um yeah I just keep having these moments where I'm like who are you (laughs) like in the in the best way possible but like literally who are you that's having these thoughts because this is not the kind of programming and thought process that I had in the past um so it's it's really interesting that like without even you know it's not mindset work but it has changed my mindset along with the along with everything else yeah that's right that's right and so again I want to just really highlight here guys uh, well first of all I want to just highlight what she's saying you know like so in the last two weeks she has basically made as much money as she does for an annual salary okay now we don't run money programs although we probably should but like that's that's the point is we're not trying to rehabituate the mind here okay like again we do teach this at level one because it's fundamental because if you if your mind is running amok even if you go have healing experiences where you're like releasing energy, chances are you will bring in that the mind will bring in that rehabituation again and start recreating and reenacting old traumas. And so it's important to understand the function over there and get exactly what the mind is trying to do in order to create safety. And so like if you don't know that, it's gonna do it. But if you if you understand how that works, then you could just kind of like let you yourself go through the process. Now, again. I think for most people, when they define transformation, they think of they, it's a little bit dehumanizing. They think like, oh, I don't like this aspect of myself. I don't want to be angry anymore. I don't want to be sad anymore. And I'm, I'm here to tell you guys, like, if there's a program that's promising you that you're not going to be some way at the end of a program, I don't know that that person knows what they're talking about. Because like, ultimately, you know, spirituality as I see it, right? Like before we come to this plane of existence and we're this infinite being or part of an infinite consciousness that then has to fit itself into a finite body and consciousness. So you can tell like landing into the system has got to be pretty, pretty jarring to come into this world. However, as I see it, it's like, it's our, it's our purpose and job to bring through these higher realms of spiritual uh, existence and spiritual awareness through into the physical world right and we're all kind of grappling with that is like what does that actually look like and so you know to to alex's point it's like okay so at some point you want to learn about again these maps of psychology but at some point you got to also let all that go and you got to let go of all the agenda and you got to let go of all your attachments and you got to just kind of like live your life you got to live it and you got to recognize that again what really matters to you the thoughts are symptoms of your inner experience okay your mind is narrating something it doesn't like about something that got hit and doesn't feel good in your inner experience and so you are not going to train your mind not to do that when something feels uncomfortable it feels uncomfortable and the mind is going to react 
There is no program on this planet that Elon and I found in 20 years and million dollars worth invested with teachers that we have ever found that stops that process. So if you're in that pursuit, I could tell you, you can continue to pursue that if you want and find that out, out on your own. But if you can take my word for it, it's not going to stop. So what, we, what we're looking to do, and how many of you guys can, can relate to what Alex is saying, or what I'm sharing here, just smash some likes, say I in the chat box, let us know that you're kind of like tracking this conversation. But what Alex is pointing to is by, by training, retraining her awareness, okay? And what that, what that looks like for those of you guys who are, who are newer here, it's whether you come to intuitive mind, whether you do our L1 work or you decide to go above that, be, above and beyond that, what we help you navigate and what we're helping you map, so to speak, inside of yourself is consciousness itself. I want you to consider for a moment here that most of us have been in school for 12 to 16 years, depending on your level of education, maybe less, maybe more, who knows. And in that entire time that you were in school and living your life, you've lived seemingly inside of this body, this incredible brain, and this literally infinite consciousness and yet not a fucking minute of your education was spent on learning anything about that. And so weirdly enough, humans know very little about their humanity and their capacity. They just are filled with a bunch of information trying to survive in this world that is going to hit all sorts of parts inside your energetic body and inside your consciousness. And if you don't know how to navigate that, for most of us, not, if not all of us, is very stressful, anxiety-inducing, anxiety overwhelming experience. And so if you learn how to navigate that, to Alex's point, like there were things in her life that were caught that in the past, she has known to create a lot of stress and anxiety in her life. Now though, as she's learned how to navigate her awareness, she knows that she, even though there may be anxiety and overwhelm, she actually knows how to turn in and work with that, not just work with it, but ultimately, again, this is not the perfect language for this, but like use it to create more liberation, freedom, and transformation in her life. Alex, do you have any doubt today that if something enters your life that you absolutely know how to work with that consciousness, how to get support in your system, and how to come out the other side way more liberated? Is there any question in your mind about that anymore? No, not at yeah. all. So like, you know, not to put words in your mouth, but would it be fair to say like you just know yourself as somebody who could be with any circumstance now? Yeah. 100%. Right. So, and, and, and that is ultimately like the best gift that we or you could give to anybody. It's like life is going to keep showing up. It's not sequential. It's, it's not angry. Like, you know, I, I, there's this conversation is like, is nature evil? Like, could you say that nature is inherently evil? I could say that there's things in nature that scare the shit out of me. If there's a tornado out the at the window that was moving winds at 150 miles per hour i'm, I'm gonna feel something about that right like that's it's very dangerous it can be scary at times but is it inherently evil that that's happening no so like in our lives it's the same thing it's like are the circumstances that are entering your life inherently evil or are they playing actually a vital role in your own awakening and spirituality and it really is just a matter of like either how you look at it and then how you train yourself However, I'm at this place in, in my own practice where it's like whether the experience out here is making me feel really good or the experience out here is hitting all these parts and creating all this fear and anxiety in my system, I kind of have a small smile all the time no matter what because I know that all of it, all of it, all of it is assisting this path of evolution and liberation inside of my system no matter how crazy things get, whether it's in my own life or you know all the crazy things that I've been acceleratedly happening in the world either either we're going to continue to be hyper reactive to all these things in our lives or we are going to learn how to do these practices within ourselves and start to be responsive and i want to share one more thing and then i'll pass it over to you alex again we had one of our clients share today who's also been with us for a number of years and now she's she's back to being a personal client with us as well how, um, you know, in her process, usually when she gets into what we call a defended self, meaning like there's some kind of fear or some kind of anxiety and we all go into like a certain pattern. Okay, we call that, the, it's not a pattern. It's, it's the way that your system actually defends itself. Okay, that's why we call it the defended self. And she was talking about some, something that's happening in her life right now that's actually very exciting. But like in the past, she would have had to very quickly like respond to, like a re react to what was happening. 
And she recognized that it hit a part in her system and, and part of her went into this defense. Now, she can make a choice or a decision in her life from that defense. And chances are if she does that while she's in a pattern, she's going to get what that pattern always gets. Because there's a certain energy to that. There's a certain mindset to that. And it just kind of like other people can feel it. And so it impacts relationships in the same way, impacts results in the same way. And she has taken the last eight weeks, eight weeks to sit with this part, resource it, soothe it, and bring it to what we call like a, a neutral state, which is a, a, high, a state of very high energy. It's where we can easily manifest from. It's why for Alex, probably so many things are happening. It's like she's just, she's learning how to bring things back to neutrality and then manifest from neutrality. Now she can respond to life as it emerges instead of react to life from her parts and her defensive parts and her, uh, uh, these defense, def defended parts. And I was just saying, I'm like, holy shit. And she's like, this is completely unusual. Usually I'm kind of fragmented and disassociated while these things are happening. And she's like, she got herself eight weeks. Now I want to ask how many of us would sit for eight weeks patiently with ourselves and not react into something until we knew ourselves to be in a very high quality energy before we said yes or no or took some action on something. I know very, very few people that can do this well. And, and what we want to recognize that's really, really important is that the life that you have right now is very much predicated, very much predicated at the energy, the quality of the energy that you're in when you're taking action. So just a qu quick question to ask all you guys if you're not tracking this is like, when you normally say something, yes or no, or take some action in your life, how many of you know that when you're responding or reacting to life, that mostly you are reacting from scarcity or fear or shame or guilt or overwhelm, like if you really track it back, you're like, oh shit, you know, when I go do that thing at work, it's in order to blah, 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 blah. So how many of you guys just smash some likes or say I in the chat box, if that's you. And it's these responses from that quality of energy that creates more of what you don't want. Because if you use the quality of energy of scarcity to create, you're going to get more scarcity. It's just how it works. If you create from overwhelm, you're going to just create more overwhelm. If you create from worry, you're just going to be more worried. If you create from fear, you're just going to be more fearful. Energy begets energy. And so, again, full circle here, it's not about the psychology because your mind is, going to, is just responding to what's happening internally. If you work what's happening internally and you can bring more neutrality and rest and safety into your energetic body, into your nervous system, the mind stops being very reactive at all. And in fact, can actually start becoming an ally. Like I never imagined in a million years being a person who was suicidal and angry or upset. My mind was a villain to me. Very angry, said really, really negative things about me and other people. It never once occurred to me that, that, that one day my mind would be like, you're awesome, you're great, your life is beautiful you're powerful and you're whole and complete. And like, that's mostly what my mind does today. Don't, don't get me wrong. Fear still happens. Overwhelm still happens. Anxiety. There are things in my life I'm just ill prepared for. I didn't know that that was coming. That is fucking scary when that happens. And confidence is not pretending like it's not there. Confidence is being able to face it from a place of alignment internally. That's like, oh my God, what an opportunity to create that much more liberation and freedom in my life. And that's really, really the beautiful gift of this work. What do you say? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Um, yes. I mean, I think it is, is exactly that piece about, I mean, going right back to the beginning where you started this call, right? It's like, there's so many of these things that I've heard before and I've understood no, I haven't, under I've understood them intellectually, you know, right. but until you actually have the experience, it's just, you really don't, you just don't know. And you, you can't even begin to understand what that actually means and what that actually looks like or feels like. And so it's this work, you know, it gives you that actual experience and, 
yeah, it is, it's just life changing because having that safety within the system, you know, and, and the tools of knowing what to do, even when, you know, safety falls out, like you say, and, you know, you still have things show up in your life that you wouldn't necessarily choose. Just having that there, it makes everything so much easier. Not easy is the wrong word, but like, you know, there's just this experience of peace and well-being and, yeah, and confidence comes from that, you know. Then you have the confidence to just respond to life in a totally different way. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful work. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you could peg it down to one thing, but what, what, what has been, if you could say one thing, like what's the, what's the one thing that you feel has made the biggest difference for you? Yeah, I think if I had to pick one thing, it's, it's the, it's the community and the support, okay. um, because there is no way I would have got to the parts and the places that I got to in my journey if I hadn't have had that support um, of other people around me um, you know having teachers like you to to point to things because look it's like you know there was some moments that were really uncomfortable and I my normal pattern would have been screw that I'm out of here see you later <laughs> and and sure. that's probably what I've done. It is what I've done a lot in my life. But because of the support and the safety and the guidance that you guys provide, there's just this, you know, there was very like gentle reminders of like, you know, is that new <laughs> or is that the way you've been operating your whole life? And having these things highlighted to me, that's like, whoa, it's a bit like a smack in the face in the beginning because you're like, oh my God, I have been doing that my whole life. And having to look at those patterns and, it, you know, it, it's, it's quite uncomfortable. But then you get to be in that support and the, the field that, you know, you guys have created and the whole community has created. Like being able to actually feel that support that's like beyond anything I've ever experienced. It's just, it, yeah, it just is so healing and, and I don't even have words for it. <laughs> Yeah, so so beautiful yeah and and again for everyone listening it's like how many of you guys know that you just really suck at asking for support like it's not your you know modus operandi like you know most people we work with are hyper independent entrepreneurial you know a type type personalities that you know those are the people who generally like like to work on themselves i'm not saying you have to be that way but like those are the people who are going to be like i gotta i gotta handle this i gotta figure this out you know i gotta da 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 and so like <laughs> pick me and so one of the things that we want to recognize and, and this is why i want to tell you guys this because a lot of the ways that you guys are this is again why mindset just can't reach deep enough in the system a lot of the the identity and the personality or call it whatever you want again the really your personality and identity is all the, the trauma that happened and ways that you learn to adapt to it again this defended self that's really what a personality is right it's a mask that defends and tries to protect all this soft gushy connected stuff underneath because we currently live in a world that doesn't admire this sensitivity that humans grow up with and if you're like i'm not a sensitive person i'm like you were though i i've never met a child that's not a sensitive child the big emotions they feel very deeply ah the tantrums right like all that kind of stuff i have a three and a half year old and so like the way that we've learned to survive through a world that doesn't admire sensitivity is by having to like layer up you gotta you gotta put this stuff up now here's what you want to get most of that happened before you were three years old like the foundation of a human being is very, very set. And honestly, even earlier, like I think there's a, a spiritual thing here. You know, they say it's a nature or nurture. I'm like, mm, it's kind of spiritual. Like if you've ever had a baby within the first few months, you're like, this child has a personality and I didn't teach them that. And they, and they have desires and opinions and wants and things like this. Like you believe in past lives. You don't believe in past lives. Like I am like consciousness is energy. We can measure that. We know that energy can't be destroyed and can't be created. You had a face before you had this face, in my opinion, right? Take, take that, take that or leave it. And so like that face 
came with something. Like it had a previous experience in some body, in some other location. Like it, it has these desires and these wants from whatever it might be. So we want to recognize that, that human consciousness is heavily influenced by our relationships. Heavily influenced by our relationships. I mean, I don't think we can, anybody can be like, no, not at all. Right. And, and then our perceptions of what was happening in those relationships or how those people were interacting with us. And so by the time you're three, you've had three types of experiences. You've, you're having your inner experience. This is my, what, my experience with myself. Then you're having your experience with your caregivers, right? My experience to them. And I want you to also realize that generally speaking, what you thought about mom and dad and how you perceive them will ultimately turn into how you feel about the world, even at a more meta stage, is how you feel about God right? Like if mom and dad were bad this way, then God must have been bad this way. Because at that age, you think mom and dad are basically like the all-knowing, omnipotent creatures. And so once they start disappointing you, it's like, God, it's not just parents disappointing you. It's like, God is disappointing me. Like this thing that is giving me life and it's supposed to nourish me and give me all these things. Like it's not disappointment, right? And so there, there's that disappointment and trauma that sets in. And then there's at the level of group. It's like your relationship to group, right? Like at school or things like that. And then of course we all have the story where, where we're like reading in front of the room and trauma happens. And so again, biologically built for connection. And this is how we connect to ourselves, to others and to groups. And there's trauma that happens at all those levels. So one of the ways that we, we can, again, wrong word here, but like correct. When I say correct, it really means like your system has been trying to get a need met. Alex was trying to get a need met by doing all that work. Elon and I, 20 years, trying to get a need met. And, and overall, if I can point at it, and I hope it doesn't trigger people too bad here, because when I point at it, you're going to feel it in your system, is the need is to feel safe. One of the ways humans feel safe is through deep connection with other people. We're biologically built for it. And you see what happens in this world to children that don't have connection in that way and how violent they can get. And by the way, this has been studied at orphanages where the child is like they literally run these tests where they give them everything a child could ever possibly need. But guess what? The caregiver is not there. And so that connection and heart is not there. And the children become equally as sick, equally as violent, equally as disconnected from humanity, uh, from society at large. Okay. Even though all their needs were met in other ways, it's that fundamental to us. And so then the work that we're doing, it's, it's, we're, we're, doing this work through consciousness to get those needs in your system met and the way that you meet those needs is by actually being met within yourself with others and at the level of group okay i'll say this one other way so you guys can kind of track this when children are small you can see them physically doing this from pretty much the moment they can start walking even before you know even once they start sitting up they put their hands up and do this little face and, and what, they're, what they're trying to do is, this is a, called a reach and respond. They're reaching and they, they're, they're looking for a response from the caregiver. When they get older, you see this too, they run up to you and pick me up, you know, and they want to get picked up. However, we want to recognize that that's happening from the moment a child is born through energetic signaling. They're signaling the caregiver and they're looking for the caregiver to get the signal back. When a child gets upset at, before they have any sort of language and all they could do is cry is one of the reasons is they're feeling disconnected. And that creates anxiety in their system. And that's an untrained nervous system that doesn't know how to downregulate itself. And so the child leverages the caregiver's nervous system to, okay, I'm safe, I can downregulate again. And then they sleep, right? And, and, that's, and that's what you get. But as adults, we think like, oh, okay, well, how do we repair an adult? Well, exactly the same way that a child gets connection. As adults, if you, again, just take a quick moment to feel into yourself, even right now, oh, as I name it, it's starting to happen, you're all pinging my system, everyone who's listening to me. And then now look at Alex for a moment and notice that your system is going to subtly make a change and it's going to start pinging her system. It doesn't matter wherever you place your awareness, your system is going to check that person out. These are called energetic signals. And what you're trying to figure out is lots of different things if we like name it psychologically, but it's just this like, are we connected? Do I trust this person? Do I feel safe around them? Are they speaking the truth? Do they have integrity? Are they worth listening to? Right? Again, this is all the mind chatter, but it's really, it's just, it's a, it's a deep felt. There's no language for that. 
So that signaling that a human being desires continues to happen all the way through, you know, till we take our final dirt nap. Everyone throws some dirt in your face and then they go eat some bologna sandwiches. But like up until that moment, you're going to continue to do this reach and respond thing. And most of us are disappointed by life and by God and by culture because we're reaching and no one is responding. And so you have hundreds of thousands of these repetitions in your system of like micro disappointments that have happened. And then of course it shows up in a more macro way in our relationships and other ways. And so I want you to just take a moment to feel in to your own system. And what would it be like if every time you reached out, you had a community that responded? Yeah, Sierra is feeling that deeply. And it's okay to feel it deeply. Like, get intimate with your experience. Like, you have a right to feel disappointed. There was an absolute way that was required for you as a baby for your caregivers to show up. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the way they showed up, even if you think that there was, because guess what? If they didn't show up, it's because no one fucking showed up for them. They don't actually know how to show up. Like, they, they didn't get that template. They don't have that psychology. They don't have that energy. They did the best they could. And we have uh, we have worked with people, tens of thousands of people. I've heard the most fucked up things that parents have done to their kids or not done to their kids. And, and I could tell you, regardless, that's still my opinion on what, what's going on with caregivers. What was done to them, they usually are a muddled version of that. If they were beaten at home, usually they will either decide not to hit their kids or be a muddled version of that or drunk or abusive and blah, blah, blah. And we think of this stuff in, the, in genetics, but you really want to think of it as energetic coding of what happened at home. And again, it's, that may have been an important lesson for that child to have for whatever reason, for whatever gifts they were trying to develop. And so again, back to my inquiry here with you and maybe something you want to sit with and why we develop our programs, our communities, like everything is built around these principles of like, well, what happens when you start reaching and someone continues to respond to you? And you may have a feeling like you may be so disappointed that when people start responding, you actually start telling people to get the fuck away from you because you need to prove your story right. You need to prove that you're a lone wolf. You need to prove that things don't work out for you. You need to prove that you're not worthy, right? Like that's just this personality, this identity, this defended self we talked about here over and over again. It needs to prove its story right. It needs to prove its worth to you. Otherwise, why would you keep a part of your personality that was serving no purpose? So there are parts inside of you that are like, if we stop doing this, I won't have a purpose. And that part inside of you is scared that if you, if part of you believes that it's lost its purpose, that you're going to throw it away. And that part needs reassurance too, that no matter what transformation happens, no matter what comes here next, no matter what upgrades you go through, this part gets to come with you because being whole and complete is not about leaving parts of yourself behind. And if you try to do that, that part is going to hang on for dear fucking life. Healing is reintegrating that part back into the whole so that it no longer needs to have that concern at all. It gets its needs met. It gets met every time it gets concerned. And that's why Alex, you know, can say things like, I would have been scared in this moment, but now she knows I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to reach. And now I expect and know that I'm going to get a response. So that allows for her system to, because ah, sometimes I can bring myself back. And Alex, maybe you could talk to this too. Like sometimes you've done enough work where it's like the situation, you're like, I can get myself back. But other times it really fucking, it's really scary sometimes. The little boy, little girl gets really, really scared and you are spiraling out of control. And in those moments, what I've learned is you can't do it on your own. You're not going to find your way back. You need another person who's grounded and maybe you want to just, I don't know if there's an experience or something you want to share around that because I think it's really important. Yeah, definitely. I feel like there's definitely a lot that I now feel I can be with on my own, like way more than I could in the past. Um, but yeah, there's always new layers, right? And it's usually when I hit some new, deeper layer that will be... You know, if, if my system freaks out, um, that will be the time when I know that I need to reach out for support because I, yeah, it's just too much on my own. And I, and the thing is, it's like, 
that was so hard for me in the beginning, you know, the whole conversation about the lone wolf and, you know, finding it difficult to ask for support. Like that was a hundred percent me. Like it was really scary. Um, and now it's, it's just like, this is what I need. And it's, it doesn't have doesn't have that same fear at all because I actually know that I'm receiving medicine when I do that and I think it's just also important to kind of say that like you can't just do that with anybody and you know I think sometimes even when I was sharing before about how amazing you know the main thing that that kind of helped me and that I would say is is um you know the best piece about the work I've done with you guys is the support like Mm. I've been in other communities where at the time I was like oh this is an amazing community and this is great support but that is like not what I mean like the support here is different because of the work that you've done that Ilan's done that the other people in the community have done that we are able to receive something that is not available out there generally in the world and I can't just go and reach for support from like my neighbor or my friend down the road or my family or even other coaches or mentors you know and it it's yeah there's something very specific about the support here that is obviously because of the work that you guys have done and that's been cultivated so. yeah thank you for naming that and i just want to name it to you guys because that sounds a little culty it's like <laughs> which is which is fine like i'm i'm maybe fine if anybody thinks that but like it, it sounds culty because like i can't go for support with my family and here and that and and she doesn't mean like she can't go talk to her family i just want to really like name what this means it here's what it means it's like you can go sit in therapy with a bunch of people and it's useful right like to talk about things and name things and things of that nature um and by the way before i share this because we are getting to the to the top of the hour if you guys find these conversations interesting and you are somebody who you know like you want to make you want to find a program and experience something that's gonna get you unstuck from where you're stuck you definitely want to come talk to our team it doesn't mean you're making a commitment to anything the first phone call that we do with everybody we call it discovery or clarity call it's really like there's no pressure we don't even sell on those calls we don't allow our team to sell anything on the call because we actually want you to show up and not feel pressured to make any decisions on anything however come to those calls to find out what it is that we do here how we facilitate it because we can't get through all that on these calls like this is these are tasters hopefully insightful enough to create generate curiosity in your system and i could tell you that what we do here is transformational and this is again i always say this it's not this is not a place where we have to write little language on the bottom that says only one to three percent of people will ever get these results these results are not typical these results are typical for everybody who participates in this work you do this work and as far as i'm concerned it is inevitability a guarantee that you will have profound transformations in your life and the reason for that is because it's human nature this is an, an innate knowing that exists in all of us that has been we have conditioned ourselves away from and the moment you get conditioned back towards it it's not a training anymore it is a remembering like we so we don't need we don't need to teach you we need to remind you that's what we're actually doing okay and and a lot of us me included i need reminders all the time that's why i have a huge team of teachers and communities around me because i know i can't do it on my own if it takes if it takes a village to raise a child it takes a village to raise an adult as well to transform that adult It just does. And so to Alex's point, we're not sitting around talking about our problems in in the setting that you might do like in an AA meeting or therapy. Although again, that has merit. I'm not discounting that at all. What we're doing here in the way that we show up for each other is we meet each other's parts. There's like these parts in your system that I've been pointing at, these defended self parts. And through awareness, we teach people how to meet not only their own parts, but with another and you do this in a very specific way and you can train yourself to do this better and better and better and better and better and better. And then as you do this, what ends up happening is that part that comes forward that's afraid or scared or overwhelmed. What that part's really saying is, I have a need. That's what that part's really saying. Usually we're like, shut up part, I need to go back to work. You know, like we just go about our day or we drink or watch TV and forget about the part. But the part is still there and now it's very confused because it keeps asking for this need to be met. Like imagine a child that is upset and keeps coming to mom, but the mom's not paying attention. Does the child get more upset or less upset? 
that hasn't changed because you've become an adult. There's like a deep wounding and heartache that's happening in humanity. And so like, again, if you have another person who's dedicated their work, their lives, their spirituality, their practice to meeting people with presence, that part gets, ah, oh. okay, there's somebody there. I'm not alone this time. And so the fear that the part has is begins to subside. As you do this, you're actually metabolizing energy in your energy body and your nervous system is down regulating and going to a rest and digest state. When you do that, your body has an ability to bring itself back to homeostasis and heal. You do that a lot of times. Now the mind is no longer upset because the mind has nothing to react to that's happening in the system. And suddenly your mind is more placid, more relaxed, more available, more energetically rich. So again, this is, this is exactly what's available here for you guys and the hows and the whats and all the things like that. That's what we do in the programs here. This is just to kind of give you guys an idea. Like it, it this does require months of retraining years, lifetimes of retraining, but like you're either going to live the way that you have feeling stuck if you feel stuck and there's a cost to that, or you're going to take some kind of action in your life. You're going to be like, you know, let me at least take a look at this thing and find out if this can support the type of growth that I want to have in my life. Because these programs, I mean, Alex would probably be the first to tell you, the return on investment is not something that happens over a six month or a 12 month period. This is something you will carry on with you for the rest of your life. It will probably change the way that your family's lineage works because you'll influence through your children and your parents and all these other things are going to see your relationships change. And that means everybody is impacted. So it's like, what, how do you calculate the value of something like that when something is not paying off now, but is paying off for the rest of the time that you're living and breathing and probably into your next consciousness as well. And so for all you guys who have like, you know, money conversations and this and that, I totally get it. I've been there a million times. Here's a little bit of coaching for me to you. Before you ever decide to do anything in your life, the first question you should ask yourself is not, can I afford this? It's, do I want to actually do this thing? And if the answer is yes, then we've gone through great lengths to create partnerships with people to make sure that we can figure out how to put you into programs that pretty much, you know, m most financial situations that our people are, are in. Uh, so just like kind of have that in the background, but like let yourself at least feel a yes at the very least before you decide to do anything else and you're going to see dramatic dramatic changes in your life so any other parting words you want to give people uh yeah just don't let money be an obstacle um if it's an obstacle right now it probably always will be if you don't dive into this work so you know what is it going to cost you not to do this work yeah. um, it's the best money i've ever spent priceless i love that i love that yeah all right, y'all. We love you very much. Thank you for your uh, awareness. Um, I'm going to ask my wife if she has time to be on here next week. We're going to have a conversation about partnerships. That's It's been long overdue. Um, so guys, just keep showing up. And uh, for those of you guys who, who are getting what we're talking about here, you're ready for this kind of support in your life. You know that you have these aspects of yourself that just require something. Maybe you don't know exactly what they are. Maybe you don't really understand what our work is. Like you kind of have to come in here on faith sometimes first, but I got to tell you, like, again, you do this work, we guarantee you're going to see seismic shifts in your experience of life, perception of yourself, relationships, ability to earn money, health. Like there's, there's nowhere this doesn't touch. So yeah. Thank you for your first timers, Sierra, Tina, um, everybody who's sharing. It's like heartwarming to see this community continue to grow and, Honestly, we just attract the most amazing, wonderful people. Um, so just such a pleasure to have everybody here. Appreciate your awareness and attention. What an asset. Love y'all. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.